Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Kredisha St. Louis. Coming up, the National Drug Prevention Unit launches Drug Awareness Month 2015. President of the Dominica State College says the college is meant to educate the nation and public servants to be recognized for contributions to the sector on Friday. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thanks for staying with us. The family of former Prime Minister Pierre Charles on Tuesday marked the 11th anniversary of his death with the launch of a foundation and a website. The foundation, which was launched at the Pierre Charles Secondary School in Granby, was the initiative of Charles's daughter, Pfizer. In 1979, at the age of 25, Charles was appointed a senator in Dominica's parliament. In the general elections of 1985, he contested the Granby seat and won. When the DLP came to power in 2000 under the leadership of Rosie Douglas, Charles was appointed Minister of Public Works and Communications. When Douglas suddenly died in October 2000, Charles was elevated as Douglas's successor. Charles faced a difficult situation upon taking office and was forced to impose austerity measures, which years later proved to have saved the Dominican economy. GIS News will bring you details of Tuesday's ceremony in Wednesday's newscast. It's the start of the new year, and one of the most rewarding resolutions that anyone can have is to further his or her education. GIS spoke with President of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, about how the institution is creating opportunities for access to non-traditional students. One of the classifications of a non-traditional student is adult learners who work full-time and study part-time. Dr. Peters says the Dominica State College is meant to educate the entire nation and easy, affordable access is one of the most important strategies of accomplishing this goal. We want students, working people who are now working, to have access to the college. That means we should be running classes from at least 4.30 to 9. And so we started last semester and this semester we want to continue. And in the fall 2015, our goal is to have just a whole new college in the evenings. Like have the food court open and class go on as usual. And so at that time, the entire college program will be open to non-traditional students. But currently, the, the major areas we, we are serving students in are the areas of um, business, accounting, um, law enforcement, illegal studies. These seem to be the things that most students are interested in. The school is also looking to introduce studies in areas such as public administration, liberal arts, entrepreneurship, and introduction to business. Dr. Peters explains, however, that although having a degree is important, the school considers having knowledge which is applicable to the world of work is of more use, especially to the adult learner. He says the college offers what is called Career Technical Education, or CTE. It's the notion that before we believe, especially in the Caribbean, that all you need is a degree and all of a sudden you can work. But a degree in what? If you have a degree in sociology, okay, maybe you can teach or do something, but Suppose you have a degree in, in, in social work, a social degree in social work, which is a certification makes you be able to take care, either become a care provider or manage families who need a care provider. So that's what we're looking at. If I teach you how to um, run a, a, a dairy product um, place, either through poultry farming or whatever, you become a poultry farmer, and it only takes you two years. If I teach you how to design clothes and sew them, then you have a career. You don't have to go and ask anybody for a job. 
And that is what CTE is about, career technical education. We're going to be working in a number of areas in the next five years on developing programs that are relevant to jobs. And not only jobs in Dominica, jobs throughout the world. The DSC president added that the institution is excited about introducing two new courses in the CTE program, that is fashion design and sewing and a musical instrument repair. Persons who are interested in furthering their education can find information on the school's website at www.dsc.edu.dm. The National Drug Prevention Unit has launched Drug Awareness Month 2015. January is being recognized as the Drug Prevention Month under the theme, Message of Hope, Drug Use Disorders Are Preventable and Treatable. To open the month of activities was an address by the Minister for Health and the Environment, Dr. Kenneth Daru. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of diseases and infirmity. Mental health is defined as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. National statistics indicate that over 70% of clients admitted to the psychiatric unit are diagnosed with drug-induced psychosis. This is much cause for concern, since as suggested by the definition, the community and the nation's productivity is compromised when these individuals are unable to meaningfully contribute towards this process. Substance use disorder is a complex brain disease and includes such diseases as alcoholism and drug addiction and occurs when a person has dependence on alcohol and or drugs that is accompanied by intense and sometimes uncontrollable cravings and compulsive behaviors to obtain the substance. Mental and substance use disorders are major public health problems as they present as the leading causes of disability worldwide and are important risk factors for other diseases such as HIV and chronic non-communicable diseases, including cardiovascular diseases and diabetes as well as unintentional and intentional injury. According to the Honorable Health Minister, mental and substance abuse disorders account for 23% of all years lost because of the disability and claims the lives of up to 200,000 people annually. He says this year's theme is a message of hope to drug users and their loved ones. Drug use disorders have many adverse effects. These are not only felt by the user, but the impact translates negatively onto the family and loved ones, destroying homes and resulting in loss of children and educational and employment opportunities. The impact is also directly and indirectly felt in communities and across societies, including healthcare expenditures, lost earnings and costs associated with violence, crime and accidents. The theme offers a message of hope that drug use disorders are preventable and treatable. Studies indicate that early education on the dangers of substance use and abuse to children beginning from the early childhood years has proven to delay first use of drugs. Delayed first use of drugs reduces the likelihood of developing the associated disorders and this can further be strengthened if the knowledge acquired is reinforced and life skills are promoted within families. Those who suffer from drug use disorders can be supported through evidence-based treatment, but unfortunately, many of those who die do so from otherwise preventable overdosage. While the success of treatment and rehabilitation depends largely on the willpower of the drug user, a strong social support that is non-discriminatory will only enhance the process of continued care. The Honorable Minister pledged government's commitment to control the supply and demand of drugs. I am of the firm view that unless the demand for illicit drugs is reduced, then the fight against cultivation, production and trafficking will be harder. I therefore want to, at this juncture, pledge my support to the National Drug Awareness Prevention Unit in its campaign to prevent drug use and demand for drugs among our population, particularly the most vulnerable the youth. The task of drug demand reduction is much bigger than the National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit. We have been given hope that drug use disorders are preventable. 
However, it requires the involvement, commitment, and cooperation of all and sundry. I therefore call upon every responsible individual, parent, family, church leader, community-based organization, corporate business, public and private sector organizations, philanthropists, non-governmental organization, and policymaker to collaborate with the unit in its education and awareness campaign geared towards drug prevention and demand reduction. He urged the general public to participate and support the efforts of the Drug Prevention Unit to inform the public about drugs and their effects. Meantime, the Drug Prevention Unit has planned a number of activities to mark Drug Awareness Month 2015. GIS spoke with the Drug Prevention Officer of the National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit, Malcolm St. Rose, who gave details of the activities planned for the month. Activities began on January 4th with the church service at the Atkinson Catholic Chapel, followed by the minister's address on January 5th. Other activities planned for the month include information distribution sessions at the various bus stops in the city of Roseau on January 8th and 9th. A walkthrough has also been planned for the communities of Campbell and Bataka on January 12th and 27th, respectively. It is a very interesting activity. It takes us to the community, and uh, not just to the community on the peripheral, but to the heart of the community, where we work for the community as, as a staff. But not just that, it, it, it is very well organized where we have collaboration with the other leaders in the community, for example, the nurse, the village council. And it is not a drug awareness thing per se, but it is where the different uh, agencies operating in the community when we come together they to promote and project themselves and the work that they do what we find happening too is a lot of times we find ourselves preaching to the converted so you call a forum you bring people together in a forum and a lot of the times the people who list need the information when i say listen everybody needs the knowledge but a lot of people who are directly affected you do not have them you know so that's why that's the rationale for this Drug exhibitions have also been planned for Soufrié on January 14th and Roseau on January 15th. Then there's an exposition at the, the library. Then we have drug-free rallies, two drug-free rallies planned, one in Castle Bros on January 20th, one in Vilcas on January 22nd. Then, of course, there is the, this, this new addition to our programming. We started this sometime last year, the, the hike, and so there are Hike, we, we are going to hike in the Collio Heights. Um, it's part of the National Trail. And this um, is a very interesting and exciting um, activity. The month of activities will close with the Secondary Schools Performing Arts Festival on January 30th and a candlelight vigil at Kulibistri on February 1st. This candlelight vigil, again, is a, it really emphasizes that there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's a ray of hope and telling people that all is not lost. It also gives us the opportunity to pray on the behalf of the people affected and negatively impacted by substance use and abuse. So that is done in collaboration with the Kulibistri Gospel Mission Church's Youth Department. And um, it's always a grand affair. We see display of talents, a lot of youth coming out um, from all over the country to showcase their talent. And it, it, it also promotes the idea that we can have fun in a drug-free environment. The Drug Prevention Unit is urging the general public to participate in the activities plan and to spread the message of hope that drug use disorders are preventable and treatable. Every two years, the public service takes time to recognize and appreciate the service given by civil servants with the observance of National Public Service Day. The highlight of this year's observance will be an award ceremony scheduled for Friday, January 9th, 2014, at 6 p.m. at the Arawak House of Culture. On Friday, 77 retired public officers will be recognized for services rendered to the Commonwealth of Dominica and their tremendous contribution to the development of the public service spanning over a period of 30 to 40 years. In addition, awards will be bestowed on various serving public officers for extraordinary performances in the execution of their duties. One award will be bestowed per category as follows, the Jerry Augustine Award, the Temporary Officer Award, and the Junior Officer Award. 
Prior to its official observance, six months of activities were held leading up to a few weeks before the much-anticipated award ceremony. These included charitable donations, dollar days, a sports day, hike, a talent night, a church service, and information expos. According to organizers of these various events, the activities encouraged camaraderie within the public service and created opportunities for public officers as well as members of the general public to socialize and educate themselves on the services offered by government. This year's observance is themed an efficient service, a sustainable future, and was officially launched on June 25th at the Fortune Hotel. And before we go, here are a few announcements. The government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has received financing from the Global Environment Facility through the United Nations Environment Program to support the preparation of Dominica's third national communications to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Part of this funding is to be utilized to hire national consultants to undertake technical studies and draft the national report. The government of Dominica is seeking expressions of interest from suitably qualified national consultants who have at least five years' experience in the following areas. Greenhouse gas inventory from energy transportation, solid waste and industrial processes, inventory of carbon sinks forests, inventory of carbon sinks agriculture, climate change mitigation including renewable energy, energy efficiency and energy conservation, mainstream climate change into national development planning, training, public education outreach on climate change, and systematic observation systems for climate change, including hydrometeorological systems. Work on this project will commence on January 2015 and will be completed by May 2016. Successful applicants will be expected to start work on or before February 2nd, 2015. Any persons interested in being considered for any of the above positions are requested to submit their current curriculum vitae and the letter of interest to the following. Director, Environmental Coordinating Unit, Roseau Fisheries Complex, Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard, Roseau, Commonwealth of Dominica. Telephone number 2665256. Email ecu at dominica.gov.dm. Submissions can be submitted electronically or in writing to the above address and must be received no later than Wednesday, January 7, 2015 at 4 p.m. Expressions of interest received after this date will not be considered. Private candidates registered to write the January 2015 CXC examinations are asked to collect their timetables from the local registrar's office during the normal office hours. Please be guided accordingly. Residents of Kulibishtri, Monrachet, and Environs are invited to the 17th inaugural meeting of the Kulibishtri, Monrachet Village Council on Wednesday, January 7, 2015 at 4 p.m. at the Kulibishtri Primary School. Please make every effort to attend and be on time. Coming up, how to save money in 2015. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. The black sitatuka fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sitatuka today. Ditch the ATM card. We're always making impulse purchases from a pack of gum at the supermarket checkout line to that new Midnight Groover CD. How can you stop your bank account from hemorrhaging? Take a page from the old timers and shred your ATM card. It's just too easy to take out money at the local 7-Eleven when you're craving a Snickers bar at 2 a.m. Instead, figure out how much cash you'll need each week for your regular cash-based purchases, things like lunch at the cafeteria and your daily cup of coffee. Head on over to the bank teller's window and get your walking around money for the week. With a finite amount of cash, you'll start to think twice before those spur-of-the-moment spending sprees. 
And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gisdominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Thanks for watching.